Yes. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Revival Fellowship this Sunday morning here. As all of you go, once we hit the recording, I have to repeat that so the people that are watching this later on on YouTube can uh, get a feel that it's Sunday morning here in Victoria, a beautiful sunny day, and it's a great day to praise the Lord. All right, today, the, the thing I want to talk about is having a good name, having a good name. Now, we read in the Bible about names. The name above all names, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, demons will have to flee. That's great. So you get anything. In Jesus' name, you are healed. And so those are the things that we, we understand. That in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1. And so that was the beauty of it, was that God's good name and his reputation was something that was spoken and then, wow, things happened. Worlds were created, uh, you know, fish, trees, animals. And finally, us humans were created and how wonderful it was, just spoken in. Now, along the way, of course, one of the things that is an exhortation, you come along, you're baptized, you're spirit-filled. Now, what we need to do is we need to maintain a good name. For ourselves, for our family, for our fellowship, we got to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in what we say and what we do. So when we are out there, as I said, we were we were praying about how do we preach the gospel? How do we preach the gospel? Well, there's a couple of things. We can take the word of God and we can hit the person over the head with it or open up some scriptures, bring up John 3. Unless you were born again of water and of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, as we heard in this in the testimony of Stephanie, we're we're not about scaring little children and and uh, and and anything like that. But the Word of God convicts a person, and when you suddenly understand the awesome reverential power and the name of God, the renown of God. You want to get in line with what it says, and you're willing to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be a part of the living God, to be a part of his kingdom, to know that when the trumpet sounds, that you are going to rise and meet the Lord in the air, be with him, rejoicing with the angels, ruling and reigning with Christ, cleaning up this mess. What an exciting day that's going to be, how fun that will be. And to be there is something that we want to do, and we want as many people to join us. Now, okay, so we get baptized, we get spirit-filled, and now we're walking along, we're preaching the gospel, and people aren't really responding to it. Well, one of the things is just have a good testimony. You know, you're walking, you're talking, so how come you're so happy? Well, I don't know, I can't really speak for you, but this is what I do. On Sundays, I go to church. Yeah, in the afternoon, I might do something, but I make it a commitment. I make it a priority that at 1030 in the morning or 10 o'clock, if you want to get here earlier and have some prayer, I get there early so that I can rejoice in the things of the Lord, get built up, hear the word, be there for each other, enjoy some fellowship, right? And then afterwards, we got the whole afternoon to, to do other things. So by keeping that testimony, by keeping that reputation, people can say, hey, maybe I should try that. You know, they're down and out. Like I said, there's a lot of people suffering depression, suffering illness, suffering, suffering, suffering. And the enemy obviously comes with one or two or three goals. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's the enemy. I came to bring life and life more abundantly. So I want to be a part of the, the life team. I want to be a part of the resurrection team. I want to be a part of the revival team. And when I go out, that's what I do. Walk and talk and smile. Walk and talk and smile. Hey, how you doing? And one person said, the best way to witness is just walk and let the testimony go before you. And if necessary, use words, right? That's if necessary, use words. But usually 
if our testimony goes before us, then that's it. And that comes with having a good name. Pop it up, Anthony. If you could, Proverbs 22, if you uh, get used to opening your paper Bibles, Proverbs 22. I always recommend this for young men, particularly young boys. Read Proverbs. Dad, read Proverbs to your son every day. It's how to raise a boy in the Lord. If they understand Proverbs each day, then they will be there. But a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver or gold. And let's just go to the next scripture while we're there. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. So just look, stop for a second. Put that back up there for a second. The day of death better than, than one's birth. I just We're going to think about that for a second, aren't we? We better just sort of fill that in. The point being there, when you're born, how what a wonderful rejoicing it is. I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing a couple of you born, right? I saw you born. You were already here. Yeah, you were. You're an American citizen, aren't you? Yeah. Go United States or go Canada. Go Canada, right? Yeah, especially in the women's soccer, you'll be cheering for Canada, right? Maybe? Okay. And then I saw that one born, and uh, I definitely saw this one born. Although after she got born, I, I was on the on the uh, cement floor in the uh, in the surgery room, but that's okay. I got a little... Uh, remember to eat food before you go into something like that. And then you don't get lightheaded. But anyway, I've seen you born. What a wonderful day that was. What a wonderful day to see my, my daughter born. What an even better day to see my daughter born again when she received the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Seeing Magdalena get born again, come up and receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Angie getting baptized at Elk Lake after receiving the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Seeing Anthony go get uh, baptized, having received the Holy Spirit early on. So I've seen all of these new births, these rebirths, these, these things that have happened, the resurrection power enter into them, and, uh, and how they've maintained a good name, Anthony at his job, always getting good reports from the nurses and the doctors. Hey, we want Anthony to be cleaning. We want Anthony to be doing the job because Anthony's got a, a good reputation. And people through his testimony have come out and heard the gospel. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to a church camp. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to Singapore to preach the gospel. There's a little Anthony here. Right here. Weren't you born on, on the wrong side of the tracks? Didn't you have a troubled upbringing? How are you able to do that? Because you've got a good name and you maintain it. You know what the word of God says, and you declare it on your life daily. And we declare it on each and every one of you. The blessing of the Lord be upon each and every one of you. Amen to that. And then, of course, the other thing that we said there is that the day of the death is better than one's birth. Now, why did, what, what does that all mean? And that's a struggle because nobody goes through life wishing that they die. But what we know as was said in the testimony, as is said in the word of God. Two things are going to happen to each and every one of us. This is a guarantee. You will die, natural death, ripe old age, living a good life. Maybe something happens along the way. Or number two, the Lord is going to come back. And if the Lord comes back, we rise and meet him in the air. Now, we don't speed things up by going out there and hoping and living a, a reckless life, hoping that something happens. But the point being that if you are baptized, spirit-filled, speaking in tongues, anointed with the Holy Spirit, walking on, rejoicing in the things of the Lord, then the next scripture fits for you. Philippians 121. Philippians 121. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Powerful stuff. While you're alive, go preach the gospel. While you're alive, live with a good testimony. Do well in your job. Do well with your family. Make sure that you are 
representing the Lord. Make sure that that you've got your priorities right. God, family, job in that order. God, family, job in that order. If they get reversed, then you, you do so at your own peril, right? We understand that. But I live in the flesh. This is the fruit of my labor in verse 22. Yet what shall I choose? I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is for the better. Well, I think that really summarizes it right there. Said. We've seen people fall asleep in the Lord. It's called falling asleep in the Lord when somebody dies or passes away. We've been there, right? We prayed with them. We've seen them, we, how we mourn for their loss. But what a wonderful thing it is for them. How precious and how blessed it is. And so that's what Paul's saying. I, I want to be out of here. <laughs> I would love it to be over. But I am alive. Therefore, I'm going to go on. I'm going to keep my good name. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to preach the gospel. I am chained in the dungeon in Rome, in the Roman prison. And so while I'm chained in the dungeon in, in, in the prison, I'm going to write the gospels or the letters and, and really make sure that I'm, I'm ministering to people. And a lot of people left him. A lot of people abandoned him. But we're going to look in here and we're going to just see some of the things that are there. Uh, now, what about the forgiveness of sins and salvation? Forgiveness of sins and salvation, I think, is something that we talk about a lot. Somebody might be sick. Somebody might be ill, going through something. Which is it easier to say? rise up and walk or your sins are forgiven if you flip to luke 10 just uh, open your bible to luke 10 if you would and you can read through it there's a whole story there and so it's, so jesus blows everybody away oh you've already put it up on the screen okay that's fine we'll go to it now everybody can read it uh and it says notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So the disciples have been going out, walking around and, hey, be gone in Jesus' name. Hey, rise up and walk. People are getting healed. People are this, people are that. And he says, your names are written in the book of life. And that is the most important thing. That is the most important thing. Where do you want your name? How do you want it recorded? You know, famous people have said, if you want to be successful in life, start with the end in mind. What do you want people to say after you're gone? That's an interesting one for each and every one of us. He was good. He was loving. He was a great father. He was a, a great helper in the church. Or, wow, he always had a bad attitude and, you know, which which is it, right? So when begin with that in mind, how do you want your name remembered? What do you want people to put on your tombstone? Those are the things. And then as you go along, you back it up, back it up. What other things? Because if you have a vision of what the end's going to look like, everything's going to fall into place. So for me, rise and meet the Lord in the air. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's the name that we want. Of course, in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11. Oh, you've already got it up there again. Just delay a second so people have the chance to flip to the screen. Okay. So Hebrews 11 and um, verse 39. The Faith Hall of Fame, as it says, these are people who have their name written in the Faith Hall of Fame. We can go through it. We can read it all about Abraham and David and even some people that, you know, might not have had the best reputation. David, of course, had a, had a funny reputation. All of them were flawed people that God used. And in verse 39, it says, all these 
obtained a good report through faith, but they received not the promise of seeing Jesus Christ, of seeing the Holy Spirit come down, walking and talking along the, the Son of God. Maybe being afraid as they watched him whipped and beaten, but knowing that three days later he would rise up. That's where I want. I'd like my name written into the book of life. And here's some other people that are written in there. Philippians 4, like I said, there's Paul writing some things down. As he says, uh, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Remember the women. Good names written in the Bible. With Clement also. Who is Clement? Study that. Understand who that was. They got written in there. Hey, well, I, I'm, I'm giving a shout out to Anthony, who comes in here and faithfully sets things up. The Jordan. To my wife. Faithfully helping out and all the other fellow laborers whose name are in the book of life. Again, that's what we want. Now, we want to just go back and we want to talk about integrity, I guess. And integrity means doing the right thing, even though nobody is watching. Doing the right thing, even when nobody is watching. Mommy and daddy are in the other room and you're taught to play with your brother. Nobody's going to see. You get away with it. But you get along and you play nicely with your little brother, even though mommy and daddy will never know. That's integrity. Or when you're off on a trip somewhere, nobody's going to know. You're in your house. Nowadays, you've got the internet. And you could go in there. Nobody's going to, well, except Google and all the other spy software that they have out there. Everybody's watching you these days. So, you know, it's not so much that you have anonymity. You know, when they when they catch the guy, they go, oh, yeah, he did a Google search on this. He did a Google search on that. And they're using that as evidence to convict the, the serial killers. And uh, somebody tried to do this or somebody tried to do that. How do I, how do I, you know, so anything you Google these days is part of your, part of your record. And so, you know, these days uh, there's always spy cam. Anybody got any dash cam footage of that? Anybody got a doorbell footage and they can they can piece it all together? But just imagine that all of that is a way. You keep your good name even when nobody else is watching. And that is certainly the story of Joseph, who um, is talked about a lot. We know the story of Joseph, or maybe we don't, but Joseph was one of Jacob's sons. He had a coat of many colors. And his father loved him above the other brothers. And he was a bit of a bit of a show off, a little bit of a bragger. Look at this. I've got all these super spiritual visions. And he bragged about it. Hey, I had a dream. God spoke to me and told me this. And I had a vision of this and I had a vision of that. And of course, that was certainly he was a dreamer. And his brothers just got really jealous of him to the point that they said, that's it, we're going to kill him. No, 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 don't kill him. But let's sell him off as a slave. And off he goes into Egypt. And there he is in Egypt, away from everybody. And, of course, he ends up becoming the, the servant to Potiphar. And as a result, of course, the anointed of God, the blessing is transferred, and he ends up being the, the basically the, the butler or the, the, the person that was in charge of Potiphar's house. And suddenly Potiphar, he started becoming very rich, very wealthy. And then one night, Potiphar's wife comes in and goes, hey, big boy, let's go have our fun. You know, Potiphar's away and I'm kind of lonely and I want you. And uh, he went, no, 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 I'm not going to be it. He could have easily indulged, given in. He's on away. But he just went, I'm not going to do that, and ran away, and then he gets falsely accused by the wife, thrown into prison. But, of course, God sees his anointed. So now there he is. He's sold into slavery. He's lied to, false witness against him, sent to jail, 
there's the butler, there's the baker, and he interprets their dreams. The the baker is beheaded. The butler gets back in, in Pharaoh's house and says, remember me. And of course, he forgets them until the Pharaoh starts having dreams. And eventually God raises Joseph up, who kept his good name. He now ends up second in charge of all of Egypt. What an amazing story that was, true and real. And all of these things happen so that the children of Israel, that were going to go through a famine in a few years, would have food that the family, the children of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and eventually Jacob and sons could have food. He placed them in Egypt, Africa, so that he could uh, make sure that the children of Israel had food. Wow, how powerful that is. And like I said, a lot of afflictions there, but in Acts 7, Acts 7 and verse 10. Acts 7, verse 10. And this is talking about God delivered him, Joseph, out of his affliction and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and made him governor over Egypt and all his house. That's the power of the loving God. He sees you in your moment. And if you're faithful, maybe you're not getting that promotion or the recognition or the support that you feel you need. But God sees you. You just keep walking and talking and smiling, walking and talking and serving. Whether you're in school, whether you're at, at a job, whether you're looking for a job, whether you're going through a situation, whether there's a need, whatever it is, God sees you in that affliction. You walk and you talk and you increase your faith each day and you stand on the promises of God, which says that in the end, our team wins. In the end, we are healed. We are redeemed. Believers shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Protection, provision is all there. God doesn't want his children to be walking around begging for bread. He doesn't want us looking down like the chickens do that only look down. He wants us looking up because our redemption is drawing nigh. He wants us looking up knowing that the Savior is going to burst through the clouds and he's going to take us back. Soaring with the eagles. Soaring with the eagles. There it is. That's exciting. Get up. That's the beauty of it. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you could come and see all of that. Now, along the way, you're going through something. And it says, offer a sacrifice of praise. Offer a smile, offer a hope, offer encouragement. Oh, everything's coming against me. Praise. Make an offering to God. Be thankful in everything. Oh, by the way, we got the the we don't hand it around. It's over there. If if anybody has the tied bag, etc. Okay. But the point being that we need to offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord. So in Hebrews 13, verse 15, Hebrews 13 and in verse 15. You there? All right, Hebrews 13 and verse 15, last chapter of Hebrews. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I said, sometimes it's not easy. I'm in pain. I'm suffering. I'm, I'm not able to pay rent. I, I Food on the table, it's difficult. But give him a thanksgiving that he deserves. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Give us this day our daily bread. These are the things that we are grateful for. We thank you for, for healing me of this, this, and this. And I know that in this situation, you're going to be victorious over that. I know that in the future, the promises are, are yes and amen. And my name is written in the book of life. And I give you a thanksgiving for that. That in doing that, you will feel a lot better about whatever it is. But to do good and to communicate, forget not 
For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. I mean, sometimes a little effort, a little effort to uh, to do it. I don't feel like going to church this morning. I'm uh, it's late. Uh, make that sacrifice. Bed's not going to get made itself. The shoes aren't going to get shined. The garbage isn't going to get taken out. It might get full. But sometimes you make that sacrifice to do that. Oh, I've got to get up early. I forgot to water the garden this morning. I remember that. You're like, quick, run around. <laughs> it's a sacrifice sometimes. But in the end, God is well pleased. Well pleased. That was good. So it means he sees you. He knows. We don't need to announce it with a whole bunch of trumpets. Look at me. Look how good I am. Look how helpful I am at this or helpful I am at that. But God is well pleased. Do it in secret and you get a blessing. Uh, here's one. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable unto you, pastors and leaders. And obviously, we thank you for your prayers and your support. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. Verse 19, but I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. We'll take the communion in a moment, and that's a good lead into that. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We could end it right there, couldn't we? Because that really is, is a high point. Everything we do, I want to do so I uplift the name of Jesus and glorify him. And I know that he sees it. And I understand that he is very grateful for anything that we do in his name and for the furthering of the good news message. Little bits, little steps, big things. We don't all have to write the gospel. We don't have to walk on water. Sometimes it's just like Enoch. Every day with God. Every day with God. If you don't know that story, we'll talk about it later another time. Colossians 3. A couple more verses. And to finish off. Let's see, how's my time doing? Yep. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's the name above all names. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let's finish in, I think it's finished in Ephesians 3. Yeah, let's finish in Ephesians 3. A moment of humility here. And we just go back to Ephesians 3. And in verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's another, if you want to think about that when you have your prayer time, bow your knee by your bed. On your knees, praying in the spirit is a sign of humility. Not law, you're not under law to do that, but that is certainly something that we say. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Let's bow. Let's do our bowing of the knee now, right? Don't wait until the Lord forces you to bow the knee, right? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will raise you up. But don't wait till the last second because, uh, uh, you know, that's leaving it a little risky. Of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 
that you being rooted and grounded in love, the love that passes all understanding, may be able to comprehend with all saints that is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. If anybody understands math, that's four dimensions, right? Length, height, and uh, width, length, width, height. That's three dimensions. You get four-dimensional love with God. It takes it one step further, which is amazing. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, lacking nothing, complete in everything. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So that really brings it to a fitting conclusion. God loved us so much. He's always cared for us. Whether we've been walking a little bit outside of things, he's always cared for us. He's always wanted us to be there. Maybe at times we think, okay, we'll put him on a shelf, and but he's always there for the overcomer. We don't have to be perfect. None of us are. But if we fall down, we get back up. And we get back on and we remind ourselves and each other every day that love of God that he has for each and every one of you. And that hope and that belief and that faith that he has in you. In the beginning, everything he created was good. And if you are recreated, born again of water and the spirit, you are more than conquerors. If you have not received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, repent, be baptized. Receive the Holy Spirit. Somebody's going to be looking at this at home. That's what it says in Acts 2.38. Come now unto the Lord. Put your burden down. Why do you suffer when there is an answer? We'll have a prayer line later. We'll take the communion elements soon. And remember that all the heavy lifting was done by Jesus in his name. All the people said.